Hello everyone, my name is Praveen. I welcome you all to your YouTube channel Java Fun. Uh, this is the third lecture in a in Docker uh, series. In the first two lectures, we talked about what exactly is Docker, uh, how Docker works, what is the underlying concepts and the theory behind it. Uh, in this particular lecture, uh, we're gonna play with Docker, right? As the as the title suggests. So, what we're gonna do? Uh, so Today, what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, one of the online tool called as play with Docker uh, to come up to a speed with Docker right? without going through any installation steps and all those things. Uh, because if you want to just learn the concepts of Docker, right, you want to try it out very, very fast uh, without going through installation and creating your own images and all those things. So this is a very good starting point. Um, so here, what we're going to do is we're going to just very, very simple, bare minimum. Uh, uh, we're gonna learn a uh, very very basic concepts of uh, very very basic commands of docker right so let's see um, how we're gonna do that so for that so for that what i need to do is i need to go to google and i need to say play with docker right okay it's not pay it's play with docker just type that and the link you will get is labs.playwithdocker okay uh, just say start so I'm getting a start button directly uh, because I have basically opened it uh, previously as well, right? Uh, if you are doing it for the first time, you may see uh, some different options there, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. You don't need to do any sign up or anything. Okay, so this is an online, I would say, a playground for trying out Docker commands, right? You're seeing something on the left hand side, the numbers what it is doing it's it's a clock right uh, it is giving you a docker instance for let's say four hours so you can try it out whatever you want to do it in four hours uh, but no need to worry uh, even if you're not able to complete your assignment open it one more time and you'll get one four more hours completely free uh, no charges needed any right uh, what's the second option add new instance so to to run your Docker commands, you'll need some kind of a machine, right? Uh, now, since you're not installed Docker on your machine, you need to utilize some other machine. Now, this thing is basically uh, giving you the same thing. You click on it, it will create a new machine for you. And you can create as many machines as you want so that even if you want to do it, you can run it in a cluster mode as well. Now, this is going to create a new uh, Linux host for you. Okay. Okay. Now, these are the settings that you have um, if you want to create any keyboard shortcut or whatever you want it right uh, font size and everything you can customize it in case you increase the font size toggle it in a full screen mode or something if you want to do it i'll keep it as is as of now and how many managers and the work that you want so since we're starting with very very basic uh, we just create one instance right? we don't need anything else and after you've done your testing coding whatever you want you just delete it out that's also fine okay so what we gonna do first thing that we need to do is just type docker to make sure that docker it is this particular host is coming pre-built with docker okay i type docker i got a bunch of output and it is giving me an output or a help for a docker command right so this particular host which is given to me is i have a docker inbuilt next thing i need to do is docker version so to know what was the docker version which has been there right now i have a docker engine version of 1903.11 api version then as you must have known docker kubernetes all those things has been uh, written using go the go language so this is go version git is there so git version is there which os i'm giving linux amd64 and all those things right so we don't need to go in much detail the one most important thing is uh, uh, we have a fully functional docker installed into our machine right now i'll clear it out i go uh, full screen now what i need to do now the very first command that you're gonna i'm gonna teach you is okay probably i already told you docker version right so this, that should be the first command that you need to try that's already tried the second command second command that i need to do is i want to run something on this one right so now i haven't created anything as of yet so how do i run some software on top of it now in case of docker that software so if you're coming from a java background your uh, software units are called jar er war that kind of stuff right in case of docker it is called as images images is nothing but a, a fully functional uh software unit you can see uh which is self-sufficient which you can download and run that's it uh so from where i can run it right so docker 
as we told you in our earlier lecture as well uh, so there is something called as a registry right so if you can go back to that particular example again so here you have a registry as i told you the analogy you can think of it as a, uh, think of it as a maven registry right so it has inbuilt images so here you're saying nginx so you name it and you'll have it right? all the major software will be the java linux nginx apache httpd um, uh, gemfire whatever you want it will be there you just need to pull it pull it means you need to download it and then you need to execute it right so from where i'm from where i'm downloading it where exactly is this particular registry situated right so for that we'll go back to a docker again and i'll type docker hub right so docker hub is the one which is a inbuilt or a default registry for docker so there are other registries as well uh, you can have an in premise registry as in something created by uh, uh, by your organization uh, there are registries provided by google uh, but uh, if you are not specifying the explicit registry by default it will go ahead and search into docker hub right now it is logged in me directly because i have already logged into it if you are doing it for the first time you need to go ahead and create your own login right now the second tab you are saying is called as repositories and here uh, here basically you can see your uh, different different repositories which has been there so for me i haven't created anything as of now so that's why it is empty but uh, if you want you can go to an explorer explorer and then you can find a different different images which has been there the first thing you are seeing is an oracle java 8 here you are saying it is certified it means it's an official image of java 8 uh, you can ship your own java 8 image right if you want it but it will not be a verified one so weblogic mysql couchbase mongo postgres anything you want to node redis whatever you want it it is there right busy box so we're going to use this uh, as part of our lecture as well. Okay. So Docker Hub is the one from where the images has been pulled. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put some, we're going to pull some images as well, right? So the command is Docker pull and the image name. So let's say I want an hello world image, right? I say hello world. Now, as I told you, think of, uh, docker registry as a maven registry right in case of maven you have the version you have the uh, you have an artifact name you have a version here also you have the artifact name and the version now if i don't provide a version what it's going to do it is going to pull up a version or the latest version which has been there right and what is latest we're going to talk about it uh, in in uh, in our lecture as well now if i don't provide a version i will just press enter and if you see he is using default tag called as latest it means it is pulling up a latest version and it has downloaded the newer image for hello world so if you if i want to give a version i need to give it like this hello world and latest from where it has been downloaded it has been downloaded from docker.io from a library section now how to see whether it has been successfully downloaded or not and what all images that i'm having here right so the command for that is docker images right as you can see as of now in my repository i have one image which is hello world its version is version is nothing but a tag it's latest its id when it has been created and what is its size now i have downloaded it now the next thing is how do i run it so for the command for that is docker run and your image name i run it and i'll get an output right so my output is hello from docker so my image ran perfectly fine and what are the steps it did it it basically uh, contacted the dead docker daemon it pulled up the image from pulled up the hello world image now you may ask we already pulled up the image right in our first thing but basically uh what it basically does is uh I and mean, this is a bit, bit misleading basically when you pull up the image uh it it basically pull up and put it into your local registry on this particular machine which has been there right so it basically go to local registry and then utilize get a container out of it and then execute it so that's what it is done this is a wrong statement uh, from that perspective because you already pulled up the image and it executed it it streamed the output to the docker client means on our our uh, command prompt so we are saying this thing into our command prompt now let's do something else let's pull up uh, one more image what image we want as i told you i want let's say busy box 
So I want let's say busy box. I click on busy box. Now here I'm saying I have different different images of busy box. Linux compatible, IBM Z, ARM64, 386, x86. So many things which has been there, right? And what are the tags? As I told you, if you don't provide a tag, it's gonna assume the tag is latest and it's gonna pull up the latest image out of it, right? Now these are the different different tags that you're having. 1320, something like this, right? So you can pull up whatever image you want. So let's say if I want 1320 image, right? So how do I pull it? So I say docker pull, my image name is busy box. And as I told you, you need to give a version after this one. So it pulled up a newer image for me, which is busy box with version 132.0. Now I go again here. I should see two images now. I'm seeing two images, busy box 132.0, it's image ID. Right now, what if I want uh, uh, another version of BZBox as well? So let's say I want a latest as well, right? So I do latest, and in latest you don't need to specify it. Uh, I did it, but you can omit if you don't specify it. It's by default assumes it's the latest. Now, something very interesting here, right? So now I am seeing two images into my repository. One is of version 132.0, another is of version latest, right? Now, when I say docker run, let's say I say busy box, which image it's gonna run for me, right? So that is something we need to understand. Uh, so by default, it will go ahead and take a latest image, which has been there, right? Now, if you want to run, let's say 132.0, how I can do that? So exactly same, the way you do Docker pull, I can do it with Docker run. And I will run it now. I'm not seeing an output here, right? And why is that? Because BusyBox has been not writing by anything back to your standard output, right? That's why it is starting and then getting executed. And uh, then getting uh, returned. So you're not seeing any output here. Now, what if I want to see an output? I want to go inside the container and I want to execute something, right? Because this is not really useful for me. Suppose if I'm running a Java program, let's say, if I'm running on a standalone machine, I can log into that machine. I can go ahead and check their logs. I can go ahead and see what is the file system, how it is working and all those things. This particular thing is not giving me anything, right? Because it is just starting and exit, uh, exiting it out. Uh, even in the first Hello World example, it is starting, exiting it out. How do I find out what exactly is happening? Which means, as I told you in our earlier lectures, whenever this container is starting, whenever this... Uh, compartment is getting created. I want to go inside the compartment to tell you more, right? Let's see how it works. So let's say this is my Linux machine. So this is my Linux machine on which your Docker is even installed. And I'm starting a different, different containers on top of it. So here I started hello world. Let me give a different color for it. Here I started hello world, then I started busy box. Now, machine is same, underlying machine is same, OS is same, but I have two different containers running in, inside it. These are completely isolated with one another. File system, everything is completely isolated, right? Now, if I want to, so I'm here, my, my CLI is here. I say, let's say Docker CLI. So this lets me color code it. So I am here, I'm executing my commands from here. I'm connecting to BusyBox using Docker daemon. Now I'm not really inside BusyBox container. See, if I want to go inside it and execute certain things, how should I do it? Because if that is not possible, it's quite a restriction for operations or for support guys, or even for developers, right, to understand if your image has been copied properly, if it is uh, unzipped properly, how it is working, what is happening, how do I do that? So 
you can do that with something called as in, uh, going inside an interactive mode. So what is interactive mode? So whenever you are running uh, your image, what I will do is I will run it in a dash IT flag. IT flag is an interactive mode, right? Now I can do that and I run my busybox container. Now you see it got me a different shell altogether, right? Now here I can tap type whatever I want, right? So I type SH, I got into the shell. Now let's say I say ls minus lart. It, it is giving me a different uh, file systems which has been there into this particular container. Now here I say uh, echo, whatever I want to execute because I'm now inside my container basically test. I'm I'm basically gone inside the container, right? It will execute it. Now this is I'm not really executing this onto my directly onto my Linux terminal. I'm I'm inside the container and then executing this particular uh, thing, right? Now this is inside a busy box. So what if I want to let me come out of it and let's see how it looks like. And I come out of it and let's see how it looks like in case of let's say hello world. So here it is not allowing me to enter. Why is that? Because with hello world there is no um, there is no standard output has been enabled for me, right? So that's why even though I put an interactive flag, it, it executed it and it comes out. So I am not able to tap into the standard output of it. So these are the nuances that you need to understand whenever you uh, execute a particular uh, image or a particular um, executable. Right now, go back again. Let's see, I want to execute this image again. I can do that using the image ID as well. Doesn't allow. Okay, let's type it out. Six eight five double eight zero nine BF six six nine. So I'm giving here a image ID. Now you can run it using an image ID or you can run it using the image name as well. Both are perfectly fine. So this is another way to run a um, Docker image. Okay. So that's another thing. Uh, so what did we learn? Um, so we learned how to play with Docker. Uh, using an online editor or online tool, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we saw a few of the basic commands for this. And the next lecture, we're going to see how to install Docker onto your machine. Uh, and then we're going to work from our machine directly rather than working with this play with Docker thing. So uh, whatever exercises we're going to do it, uh, you can perform those onto this this online editor as well uh, if you don't want to install it onto your own machine uh, you should be able to do that both are perfectly fine so that's bring us to the end of this particular lecture thanks for tuning in and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please go and subscribe it thank you so much